we are going to discuss class 1 antiarrhythmic drugs so uh, as we studied in the previous lecture class 1 antiarrhythmic drugs they are all sodium channel blockers and as we know there are various states of sodium channels so this is the resting state of sodium channel or the ready state and it's followed by op open or active state of sodium channel and this is the inactive state or the closed state of sodium channel and from closed state these channels then go back to resting state so depending on the state of sodium channel to which these drugs bind these drugs are further classified into three subtypes so there are three subdivisions of this uh, class of drugs so these can be divided into class 1a class 1b and class 1c drugs so since all these drugs they they are sodium channel blockers so a common characteristic of all these subclasses is that they block sodium channels so class 1a blocks sodium channels class 2 1b blocks sodium channels as well as class 1c also blocks sodium channels class 1a drugs they block sodium channels in open or active state uh, and so do class 1c drugs however class 1b drugs they block sodium channels in closed state so there is also difference in the time uh, duration for which the sodium channels are blocked class 1a drugs block sodium channels for 1 to 2 seconds and 1b block sodium channels for less than 1 second and 1c for more than 10 seconds so the so class 1c drugs they block sodium channels for maximum duration so they have maximum uh, arrhythmogenic potential they can cause arrhythmias they also um, have some uh, effect on potassium channels class 1a drugs they block potassium channels and this block is significant class 1c drugs also block potassium channels but they, this block is insignificant it's just a, a minute change uh, class 1b drugs they open potassium channels so they cause early repolarization by opening of potassium channels so these drugs they affect sodium channels as well as potassium channels and hence they have some effect on the refractoriness of cells as well so if we look um, at class 1a drugs and class 1c drugs both these drugs block sodium channels and they also block potassium channels to some extent therefore they increase the refractoriness of cells so class 1a increases the refractoriness of cells and class 1c drugs also increase the refractoriness of cells however class 1b drugs since they they open potassium channels therefore they they do not have a significant effect on refractoriness of cells see and if we look at states of sodium channels when sodium channels are in closed state they are in refractory state and in order to be stimulated they have to go back to ready state for which they require potassium efflux so since 1b class it opens potassium channels so cells will so it will not have a significant effect on refractoriness now let us uh, try to understand the effect of these drugs on the uh, on the action potentials of cardiac muscle fibers and uh, on the ecg so if we consider an uh, action potential of a cardiac muscle fiber let us say it is action potential of a ventricular fiber and so class 1a drugs they they block sodium channels and they also block potassium channels so due to block due to blockade of sodium channels the depolarization is going to get delayed so there will be delayed depolarization followed by plateau and due to blockade of potassium channels there is going to be delayed repolarization so the duration from the beginning of depolarization to the end of repolarization is going to increase so if we want to um, show it on ecg the the interval between uh, q and t is going to increase so q is the beginning of ventricular depolarization and t depicts uh, ventricular repolarization so this interval is going to increase in other words there is going to be increased risk of a particular type of arrhythmia which is called as torsades depontis arrhythmia which is characterized by increasing qt interval it is also called as long qt syndrome so by using class 1a drugs there is going to be an in increased risk of torsades depontis arrhythmia now class 1b drugs they also block sodium channels however they open potassium channels and mm, comparing it with class 1a drugs class 1a drugs block sodium channels for almost 1 to 10 seconds but class 1b drugs block sodium channels for a very brief duration that's for less than one second so if this is the ventricular action potential so there will be delay in depolarization due to blockade of sodium channels but this delay will be minute and there will be early repolarization because and because there will be opening of potassium channels so the duration from the beginning of depolarization to the end of repolarization or the qt interval is going to decrease so class 1b drugs lead to shortening of qt interval in an ecg now moving to the next class of drugs that's class 1c drugs they, they also cause block in sodium channels and this block is maximum that's for more than 10 seconds and they also block potassium channels but this block is insignificant so if you take a look at the action potential graph 
the the delay in depolar depolarization in this case is going to be maximum however there will be no significant change in the repolarization and because of this the duration the between the beginning of depolarization and the end of repolarization is going to be almost same in other words there is going to be no effect on qt interval now uh, now let us discuss the effect of these drugs on the conduction through av node uh, or uh, the pr interval in an ecg class 1a drugs since they increase the refractoriness of cells uh, and they, they since they block sodium and potassium channels so because of these effects they decrease conduction through av node however these drugs they also have uh, anti muscarinic effects that is due to which they increase conduction through av node and the net effect of these drugs will be increased conduction through av node so once there will be increased conduction through av node there will be decrease in av nodal delay now av nodal delay which is depicted by pr interval in, in an ecg will decrease thus there will be shortening of pr interval now class 1b drugs they do not have a significant effect on refractoriness of cells and therefore they they do not have any effect on the av nodal conduction and thus uh, no effect on pr interval class 1c drugs they also increase the refractoriness of cells and they block sodium and potassium channels therefore they decrease conduction through av node however they do not have anticholinergic properties therefore their net effect will be decrease in conduction through av node which will result in increased pr interval now uh, let us discuss various drugs which are included in these classes so the first important drug which is uh, included in class 1a is the quinidine quinidine is the the prototype drug of this class <coughs> quinidine uh, its natural source is the cinchona bark and structurally it is the d isomer of quinine so um, and quinidine uh, it's an antiarrhythmic drug and uh, other than antiarrhythmic properties it has several other properties uh, so quinidine it is antiarrhythmic in nature it is also uh, anti malarial drug uh, it, it is also anti pyretic in nature and it also has anti cholinergic that is muscarin anti muscarinic properties and it, it also acts as an alpha blocker so these are various properties of quinidine quinidine can be used in in case of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia in supraventricular tachycardia ventricular tachycardia vfib However, in first two cases, since the problem is in atria and it increases conduction through AV node, so we use an AV node blocking agent along with it, for example, digoxin or a beta blocker or virapamil. Now, uh, quinidine, it has many um, properties um, which are additional and because of them, it possesses various side effects. Now, side effects of quinidine include uh, diarrhea, vomiting. Uh, it causes a particular side effect which is called as synchronism which is associated with tinnitus that is ringing or buzzing sound in ears and uh, vertigo. Uh, it also causes increase in QT interval that's increased risk of torsid depontis arrhythmia and because of alpha blocking prop property it also causes hypotension. Now quinidine can uh, it has several drug interactions for example quinidine can uh, decrease the peak glycoprotein mediated excretion of uh, digoxin therefore it can cause toxicity of digoxin. Quinidine, uh, it can also uh, cause uh, decrease in blood pressure. Uh, it can ex uh, it can exaggerate the decrease in blood pressure due to vasodilators, and uh, it also inhibits the microsomal enzyme cytochrome P2D6, which metabolizes propafenone, which is a class 1C drug, so it causes its toxicity. Now, another drug which is included in class 1A, it's called as procainamide. Now, Procaine amide, it's, uh, it's an amide derivative of procaine which is orally active so it has high oral bioavailability um, and is derived from procaine. Procaine amide, it acts in a similar manner like quinidine and produces similar action however the difference is that uh, it does not have uh, anti muscarinic effects uh, however it has some alpha blocking properties. Now um, it, it can also act as a ganglionic blocker at high doses. Procaine amide, it it can be used in case of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia and other cases. Its bioavailability is high at 75% and it is acetylated by liver resulting in formation of n acetyl procainamide. Now there can be slow acetylation or fast acetylation depending on the individual and uh, its half-life is almost 3 to 4 hours. 
Now, uh, it is used in case of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia and supraventricular tachycardia. Um, in these two cases, it's given with a uh, AV node blocking agent. It's also used in ventricular tachycardia and VFib. It's the drug of choice in Wolf Parkinson White syndrome associated with atrial fibrillation, and um, it produces uh, various side effects uh, such as um, uh, systemic lupus erythematosus and hematotoxicity. So another drug of class 1A is called as uh, disoprocamide. Now this drug it does not have alpha blocking properties however it has a maximum anticholinergic effect because of which it causes maximum anticholinergic side effects such as dry mouth and blurring of vision etc and uh, uh, it's contraindicated in glaucoma and uh, in, in case of BPH because it causes urinary retention and it can itself cause arrhythmias the drugs of class 1b the most important drug in this class is uh, known as lidocaine now lidocaine is the most common local anesthetic use so you must have heard its name this lidocaine it is it has high first pass metabolism when given by oral route because of uh, which it's always used by uh, iv route and it's metabolized by liver and, mm, and the metabolism is dependent on hepatic blood flow now, lidocaine, it has high apparent volume of distribution because of which loading dose is required. Uh, lidocaine, it can, uh, it can block sodium channels only when they are in closed state. So, if we take a look at various states of sodium channels, sodium channels are in closed or inactive state after depolarization has taken place. Now, in order to go from closed state back to resting state, repolarization is required. So, it can act on uh, sodium channels in depolarized cells or depolarized tissues. It means which uh, after depolarization, when sodium channels will be in inactive state, then it can, lidocaine can block those sodium channels. And uh, the best example of uh, the tissue where uh, cells remain depolarized is, uh, it's in case of ischemic tissue. Because in ischemic tissue, there will be a lack of oxygen supply to the tissue, which will cause decreased uh, production of ATP and decreased production of ATP will result in dysfunction of sodium potassium ATPase pump. As a result, the ionic balance will not be restored and the cells will remain in depolarized state. So, it will uh, lidocaine will block sodium channels in these tissues. That is why it's the best drug in case of arrhythmias which occur after MI. So, for post MI use, the lidocaine is the best drug that is available. So, now. Uh, in case of MI, there is increase in permeability of calcium through the cells. So, more calcium will enter into the cells and it can generate action potential of its own. Now, this action potential, it can be propagated to the next cells uh, but through opening of sodium channels and it can cause arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. So, we use lidocaine to block sodium channels so that there will be no propagation. We can use other class 1B drugs as well. Similar uh, thing happens in case of uh, digitalis toxicity. So, in digitalis toxicity, there is increase in intracellular calcium and because of this increase in intracellular calcium, it can generate its action potential, uh, its own action potential which can be then propagated. So, in this case, we can use lidocaine as well. Another important point about lidocaine is that it's not effective in, in case of arrhythmias of atria. So, in atrial arrhythmias, it's not effective and the main reason is because um, the sodium channels remain closed in atria for a less duration of time. So, if this is the action potential in atrial muscle fibers and this is the action potential in ventricular muscle fibers, the duration for which sodium channels remain closed in atria is less as compared to ventricles. So, this drug lidocaine, it does not produce a significant effect on the arrhythmias of atria, mainly because sodium channels are being closed for a less duration as compared to ventricles. Now, Lidocaine, it's uh, it's mainly used for uh, MI and digitalis induced ventricular tachycardia uh, or ventricular fibrillation. Now, lidocaine, it can produce various side effects. It does not produce uh, side effects related to the heart. That's cardio cardiogenic cardiotoxic side effects. It produces neurological side effects, and these side effects include paresthesias, uh, tremors, and uh, dilemma and seizures and uh, even uh, it can also cause uh, nystagmus it can also cause malignant hypothermia in some cases now another Im another important drug uh, in class 1b it's called as uh, mesilitine now this drug uh, is this drug uh, it's an oral derivative of lidocaine 
so it has maximum it has almost 100 percent oral bioavailability and it's used in case of uh, in case of ventricular arrhythmias uh, such as in ventricular tachycardia and it's also used in neuropathic pain it blocks sodium channels in the peripheral nerves so it can decrease pain in uh, neuropathy such as in diabetic neuropathy and it produces similar side effects uh, neurological side effects such as uh, paresthesia tremors etc now in class 1c uh, an important drug is flecainide now flecainide it's the prototype drug and the most preferred drug of this class uh, it blocks sodium channels in open state it does not uh, have alpha blocking and muscarinic blocking properties now flecainide it it can be used in case of ventricular tachycardia, v uh, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia and even in supraventricular tachycardia. Normally in these cases we use class 1a drugs but if these conditions become life threatening or more refractory in nature then we use class 1c drugs such as flicanide. Um, it can also be used in, uh, it's a drug of choice in wolf parkinson white syndrome for decreasing tachycardia. That's when it is not associated with atrial fibrillation. In that case we use brokenamide. Uh, it's also used for the diagnosis of Brugado syndrome. So these are various uses of flicanide. Now flicanide uh, is not used much these days because of its side effects. It can lead to worsening of uh, congestive heart failure and it also increases mortality in the patients of myocardial infarction. Another drug in class 1c is uh, propafenone. Now, Propafenone, it blocks sodium channels in open or active state. Uh, it also blocks calcium channels and it also has some beta blocking properties. Propafenone, it has high oral absorption and it is metabolized in liver by the, the microsomal enzyme cyt cyt uh, cytochrome P2D6. And this enzyme is normally inhibited by class 1A antiarrhythmic drug that's quinidine. So, uh, if we use quinidine at the same time, that's going to cause toxicity of propafenone and we need to decrease the dose of propafenone in this case. Now, the side effects associated with propafenone include nausea, vomiting. It also leads to taste changes and uh, it can it can also because of its beta blocking action, it can worsen congestive heart failure and it can cause bronchospasm as well. It is used to maintain sinus rhythm in persistent cases of atrial fibrillation and it is also used for uh, prophylaxis of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Uh, 